ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming the co-producer and director of photography on the film, Mr. Leroy Patton. And, a, and the director, Jesse Maple. Both Jake and I wanted to do this uh, Q and A, and this is the first one we've actually done together because <laughs> we both wanted to interview you guys. Yeah. But we do also want to make this interactive, so do have some questions. Feel free. But um, Jake, you want to ask the first question? Sure. Well, I just want one thing I, um, I wanted to talk to you about was how you came to the subject. Well, I mean, I should preface that by saying I know how you came to the subject. <laughs> but I wanted to talk maybe a little bit about there was a documentary first, that this was a, a work of advocacy for you. There was something you wanted to talk about, an issue you wanted to talk about. And first there was a doc and then this feature. And the first film I, uh, I made, my very first film, my very first film was called Methadone, One the Drug, an Evil Spirit. And it came about because Leroy and I had uh, a little uh, coffee shop in Harlem between 110th and 111th on Fifth Avenue. And there was also a methadone clinic and no one wanted uh, the methadone uh, people to come into their business. And I, we opened our doors and said, come in. And they really loved us for that. And then they began to talk about methadone, how it was an evil drug. It was just another drug. And they began to talk and, you know, and, and I'm, I'm usually for the underdog, and I felt so, so bad, and we kind of got attached to them, and uh, then they started to tell me, tell both of us their story, and I asked them, will you say that on film? And they said, yes, we said what we're saying on film, because that's how we feel about it. So that's how that came about. You want to say anything about that? And then uh, there was... Smart man. Um, we was living in the neighborhood. We was living at, at Fifth Avenue and 108th Street. And across the street, it was this, uh, the buildings, these raggedy uh, open buildings where uh, people came and, you know, that's where made their home. And, uh, and I always feel no matter how low you go, you can come back up. And I got in. I wanted to do a film to show that. I didn't want to show uh, the down and the dirt uh, when you first started. I wanted to show this young man who was changing. And all the, uh, uh, when you get ready to upgrade yourself, everybody just prey on you, you know? And you really have to be strong to come through that. And I wanted to show that you could do that right there in the community. And so that's why I came up with the story idea. This is what we were going to do this story. And I, at the time, Loretta Devine just finished college and she was uh, trying out for a Broadway play. I think it was Dream Girls. And I cast her and she was just so happy to do it and uh, to do the film. And of course we paid them, it wasn't what, you know, but I believe in paying everybody that I can, you know? And so she, they were so happy to be paid for what they were doing, you know? And then I gave her the, her wardrobe because she was going on to bigger things, but she hadn't made any money to buy clothes. So I, I, that was also, I gave her that gift. She could have all of the clothes. And, um, Oh, he has asked. Okay. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Mich I mean, I have numerous. Could tell. Could you talk a little more about the casting and how you got everyone together? And and then, uh, if you see, you see all my whole family in there. You put the mic. Oh, we we'll see. Thank you. Uh, we you'll see my family. My mother's in there. She's sitting up there with the hat. I think she's chewing gum. And <laughs> and then I had. Uh, 
my brother, he was a technician, but then when he, he got the part in front of the camera, he didn't want to work behind the camera anymore. He was a little <laughs> boy that found little brother. And then uh, the other, my other brother was, uh, he was the basketball. We, they wasn't going to have a game because they didn't have a coach. And then he said, we got a coach. That was my little brother. And, of course, my daughter is in there. Who's uh, actually here, Audrey. Who's here, Audrey. Audrey. Audrey, Audrey, uh, Audrey as Audrey. Audrey as Audrey, yes. Yeah. And she discovered little brother for us. I was looking for a little oh. 12-year-old boy. And she said, Mommy, I got a little friend right next door. He'd be perfect for this part. Oh, that's and he turned out to really be perfect. He was amazing. Uh, yes, yes. Yes, he was. Um. And I, I think we should also preface this by saying that, you know, this film actually predates Losing Ground. So Jesse was actually the first African-American female to direct a feature film. And unfortunately, like Losing Ground, it never received a theatrical release until you had 20 West, right? Yes. We, uh, we uh, opened 20 West because that was the time that, uh, during that time where they wasn't showing any black films because we were complaining about the subject matter. And then the big, the Hollywood production decided we ain't making no more, you know? And they, and so we didn't have any place to uh, show our films. And um, I was part of the American Film Institute in California one year and I, I came back to New York to, um, and I wanted to show my friends my, what I had did while I was out in California. It was called Escape, Escape Artist. It was written by uh, Mary Brown, and I brought the rights to, to do it, uh, to do uh, the film. And, um, and at, the same t at that time, you know, when I say I brought the rights, it wasn't expensive because we, we were all just starting out. And so when I came back from California, I went up to 94th Street where they have the still photography uh, building. And I asked them, you know, I needed some place to show my film. And, and they told me, well, no, you can't do it during the regular uh, uh, week. You have to do it on the night that they are cleaning the building. And she so said, you have to be careful because we're gonna have, uh, they're going to be vacuum cleaning and running wads all over. So my answer was to them, my friend, they, they wear fur coats too. They ain't going to be coming in here, thumbing <laughs> over the wads and mop buckets and that. So, and the place was very small. And so we had this brownstone in Harlem. And I asked my husband, I said, can we get this ready in three weeks? He said, yes, we can. So we can have a premiere and my friends can come all dressed up. You know, and so that's how it got started. And then after we started it, then uh, we decided we, we have to have some place where we could uh, show our films because nobody's showing them. And even when we went to festival, all of us started out and they would be paying us in the hall. You know, they, nobody had any place where you could take you inside a room and pay. They were just passing out your check and we would be in the hall. And I said, and we decided then that, oh, now we can have a permanently uh, spot to show our film. And that's how 20 West uh, came about. Well, if you can see that um, my part in all this is to support what she's doing. And uh, we had a meeting before um, uh, we came out here. She told me to keep my answers short. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm going to try and keep it very short. But I just want to thank you all for coming out because I know it's very cold out there. And I told her, I said, well, if anybody shows up tonight, they really want to hear you talking and see the film. So we really appreciate you coming out. But um, making the, the kinds of films we started out to make, uh, we always uh, was very interested in the neighborhood and doing things in our neighborhood and using the resources in our neighborhood. You can see from the credits, you know, that was the why, that was a lot of things in Harlem uh, that we used uh, because the people uh, encouraged us to do this and they supported us. So we always wanted to show 
what was going on in our community because we walked through our community every day. We saw garbage here and garbage there and ruined buildings here. We couldn't understand why all this was going on. And so we said, well, let's make a film about these things. And we did that. But my wife is always the um, motivator. She um, puts these things together and we use our talent. We try to use what we have and not go out and uh, um, seek other talents that is very expensive for us to uh, afford. So we decided to just use what, what we know and to make these films. And so that's what we did. And that's what we are continuing to do, is to use our community because we love the place where we live and we respect the people in there. Um, Jesse, we were on my radio show the other night and we talked, you gave us a couple of anecdotes about what it was like trying to join the, the union back then in 1974 when you became the first African-American woman to join the International Photographers uh, Union. Could you talk a little bit about that? Uh, yes, I'm from Mississippi by way of New Orleans. And, and, and I grew up very independent of, you know, my family. We live, lived in the country. And I just had all that, that no one could really stop me to do if I get it in my mind and I focus on it, that I could do it. And I, would, I didn't accept no for an answer. So I just keep moving on what I was focused on. And uh, the first uh, union I, I got into was really the editing union. And, um, and they tried to push all the women to be an editor at that time, you know. And, 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 and I went to school to be a lab technician, ended up in bacteriology. And I, I want, I wanted, one of the reasons I wanted to get out of that is that I, I wasn't seemingly satisfied with, in, I enjoyed it in the beginning because I really wanted to be a doctor because I wanted to wear those white coats. <laughs> and so after, after I got satisfied with wearing the white coats as being a bacteriologist, then I wanted something else. And at, in the 60s and the 70s, they, they said that minorities didn't, couldn't shoot news, and we didn't have the education, we didn't know how to do it, and this. And so they had a lot of programs, and I did a lot of volunteer work, and I also, uh, uh, they had a school uh, program at WNET, Peggy Penn was the head of it, and then they had Third World Cinema. So they was giving us all of this education, and then we were already intelligent enough to absorbed the education, and then they decided, they closed it all up because they decided that it was too many of us going out there integrating the television and feature film. And uh, so I, I, I was an editor, I worked, I was an apprentice editor, and then I met my husband, Leroy Patton, and he was um, uh, uh, still photography, and then training to be a director of photography. And he seems like, you tell him that story. <laughs> no, not when we met. And I, I, <laughs> I see you over there, my friend. <laughs> so I, uh, so he became, uh, he got into the union before me and I, so he was having such a good time, you know, traveling all over and, and being the head of the crew. So I kind of tricked him. I said, well, if you train me to be an assistant camera person, then we can travel together. So he went for the idea. And so he began to do that. And, and then you had to learn all of the cameras, 16 millimeter cameras and, and 35 millimeter cameras. And then you had to take this test. So it was very difficult. It was very few uh, black director of photography in cameramans and director of photography in the union. And then it, it, I think it was, it was either six other women were in the union at, at that time. So I had to take the test. And, and, and in order to work, I really had to, after I got into the union, I, they really blackballed both of us, you know, and told the stations not to hire us. So I decided 
They're not going to tell me that. I'm going to sue everybody. I sued ABC, CBS, and NBC. And somebody asked me, Justin, why did you do it all at one time? I said, I wanted to get it over with. So <laughs> I didn't want to go back and sue again. And, uh, and then they, so at the first time, I didn't win. And then the second time, uh, when I read, read back to them, then I, uh, Eleanor Holm, she was a civil rights person during that time. And when they sent it back to her, she said, let me look at this. And so then we had another trial. And, they, and then that's when I won. And, um, and just because you win don't mean that they're going to give you work. Right? They're going to give you work. They want to buy you out with a little bit of money. I said, no, I want to work, you know. And so it was very difficult to get into the union. But CBS finally gave me a six-week trial period. And I went with them, I went from not being no good and can't, don't know how to shoot news to being the person that they would call first yeah. and, and give me the job, you know. I even covered Rockefeller when he died. I, 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 we had to stake out for three days, you know, <laughs> trying to catch the girlfriend. <laughs> but, but the funny part about this is that um, when she came in as a camera person, um, we would work, work in the same story. She'd be working for ABC, and I'd be working for C, uh, NB, for CBS, and I'd be working for NBC, so we'd meet on, uh, on the same story assignment. And no one knew we was married at the time. And so she would be over with her camera, I'd be over with mine. So we walk over and give each other a kiss. And, and she'd go back to her camera. And um, I said, well, who is that? I said, well, it was a, who is that? I said, well, you know, just a friend, you know. <laughs> so um, the reason um, I got an opportunity to work at NBC, uh, because it was very difficult in the beginning when I came into uh, the union, my wife was working as a camera assistant at NBC, and the guy who was the head of the crew there was called Bill Kelly, and she went into Bill Kelly's office and said, well, I know this person, you should hire him and give him a chance to work. He said, well, who is it? He said, Leroy Patton, because she always used her, her, her um, yeah, and so they didn't connect the two. So she kept going, and he said, well, send him up here. So I, uh, the next day, she said, well, he wants to see you. So I went up to his office. He said, well, I'm going to give you um, a trial so you can see if you can go out and cover the news and bring us back a story. But see, I was a filmmaker, so I knew all the, the screen directions, and I knew how to shoot a story so the editor could put it together. And so I did that, and um, so he said, okay, we're going to call you and uh, give you some work down here. So I would end up, Jesse and I ended up working for NBC at the same time, and so one day they said something. He told me, he said, well, Mike, you might Mike, do it. Oh, he said that. I'm going to give your brother, you take your brother's check, uh, too. Um, he gave me my check, and he said, take your brother's check. And then when he came in, he told him, I gave your check to your little sister. <laughs> and, he said, and then uh, he said, uh, Leroy said, that's not my sister, that's my wife. And that caused a whole commotion <laughs> with the crew. Because during that time, wives and cousins and sisters and brothers, they didn't allow that, you know? But now, you know, they do that, you know? So it was a uh, very, very um, uh, interesting experience, you know? And uh, we fought a lot in the sense that um, we had to go through a lot to work into this business. We just always felt that uh, we had the right to work to take care of our family. I had a family, I actually have a right to take care of them. And, um, okay. Well, she's cut me off. She said, okay, okay. Because <laughs> I want you to see the next film. Right. Okay. And we want to take some questions from you. Oh, yeah, right. Yes. So, questions, comments? How yeah, you decide on it the was score? probably the moment, man, I couldn't get, uh, I couldn't afford to buy music, you know? So, we selected it, we went to the library and selected it. 
and we didn't have to to pay money for it. But the next film you should see because um, we did. We paid for the music score. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But when you're looking for the music, you always try to match the music to express what's going on in the scene. So uh, when she did her research and listened to a lot of the music at the library, that's pretty much how it came about. No, we don't. Uh, you know, we, we have the negative and a couple of prints. And this what? print, you want to talk about this print? Too? Well, no, I was just going to say, but also there's, you, you've given all your papers, which is a huge collection, to the University of Indiana. And a lot of that stuff is online. There's all these incredible documents that have been scanned and placed up there, which are kind of, wonder, kind of amazing. And this well, print was restored by uh, New York Women in Film and Television's Preservation Fund. So, um, yeah, because uh, Indiana University, they approached me and asked me, uh, they wanted my archive, everything that I have. And I was very happy for that because it was getting to be misplaced in different places. And uh, so I was happy that they approached me and asked me uh, for the archive. I was, I was going to say what Jesse was talking before about the experience of entering the camera, camera union. That was like a very abbreviated, modest telling of the story. Yes. Uh, there is an entire book that Jesse wrote about the experience, and it includes a lot of, of these documents, too, some of the, some of the actual legal documents. It's all, it's all in there. Um, we have about 20 copies of the book. They're totally out of print now, so uh, you should... Uh, we're going to have them out you should, you should leave now and get one. <laughs> yeah. um, we actually only have, I think we only have time for one more, and then we're going to be outside in the lobby at a table with Jesse and Leroy, so you can ask questions there, because um, we just have the other show starting. But um, one last, is there a last question? Uh, the Definitely. question is, has the industry oh, changed sorry. that much over the years, that there's a, there was an African-American female camera woman at the Republican convention who was thrown peanuts at? Peanuts were thrown at her. Oh, definitely, because they, I, we were film persons, and they switched to videotape. It's still, it's not easier, but it's easier to do a project, because if you're just starting out and you want to, you know, see what you can do, they have the camera you can put on your head and shoot, you know, <laughs> you know and do the, the whole thing. So it has definitely changed, and it changed when I got into the union, because when they accepted me into the union. Uh, I got up and, and the union needed money. And so I got up and said, let everybody in. Let all the women in, you know, who is qualified and can, aff can afford to pay the union dues. So yes, it, ha it has changed. Not as much as I would like it to, but it, it definitely has changed, you know. For, for minorities and, um, and, and women's, all women's. I just want to say, I'm, we're all so grateful to be in your presence, both of you. Thank you so yes, much. Thank you so and much, both of you.